Hey, you're at Steve Tech. I'm Steve. Today we're going to talk to you about piston rings and the ins and outs of all this deal. So what we're going to start with is the oil rail and the oil support. But first you have to know, if you have a piston that has the pin comes up far enough, it intersects and goes past the bottom of the oil rail. So if this was solid here and the pin, piston pin was all the way down here, it just takes a normal ring. But if the piston pin intersects and goes up past that uh, oil ring, it needs one of two things. It either needs a support rail. The support rail is just added in there and then your oil ring would go right up on top of this. This is a extra support rail. It is not a oil rail. It's actually just a support ring. So here is the uh, the two support rails that go on each side of the expander. So it would be machined to fit this ring. So now that's one way of doing it. That's the most common way. Then the second way that we do it is with a pin button. So it, this is in uh, one of our bigger Pro Modified style deals. The pin button, you can now see, makes a nice complete groove right there. Solid, so it doesn't need a support rail to fill the groove like that. All it needs is this pin button and it makes the groove complete. Actually does a nicer job. Uh, then you also don't have to have spiral locks into the piston. It just uses these pin buttons on each side and that keeps the pin located. And this pin button actually does come out and touch the cylinder bore. So that's what a pin button is, and then support rail. Now we'll go over to what the oil rail and oil expander ring is. So now I'm not a official ring guy, I'm just an engine builder that understands what's going on, what the engine needs. So this is your a typical flex bent, is the most common style. It's actually made in my hometown of Hastings, Michigan is where this thing comes from. Anyways, this is a flex bent ring. I think that's what they call it, it's flex bent. And it's a different style of uh, expander rail. So what this does is if you put this in the cylinder bore, all by itself, it would overlap and would go like this. It would kind of overlap if it was just in there by itself because it actually needs to expand out and can touch the, uh, the cylinder bore. So it's not uncommon for this to have a little bit of pressure. Pretty uncommon for it to be totally just like fall through the ring or fall through the bore, but very co common that it's going to have a little bit of side pressure on it. Then your oil rails go on the outside of it and do the scraping of the oil on the cylinder wall. So this oil rail and this oil rail actually scrape the oil off the cylinder bore to help control oil and the, the uh, expander is just giving these rails pressure. Now in a boosted application uh, I am not worried about uh, saving 5 horsepower or 10 horsepower by having a uh, low uh, a low pressure oil ring. Don't really care. So I always go with a standard, uh, standard, standard radial tension ring and nothing that's lower. Uh, that's a real common deal in any of the boosted stuff. You're not going to have a low tension oil ring. That's an NA deal. Okay. So now let's go to our second ring. Now our second ring uh, I always use is a hook groove ring or it's also called a napier ring. Very hard to see here but I'll draw you a picture of what a hook groove or a napier ring looks like. So a napier, here is the inside of the ring. And this is all over exaggerated of course. And it quite literally has a a little hook groove like that where this is the scraper all right so that little section right there is the napier or hook groove now this goes down downward facing and as the piston and ring goes up and down uh, it is scraping down the cylinder wall it scrapes the oil right here and puts it back into the oil rail and then back down into the bottom of the board now, if you put this hook groove ring in upside down, 
This looks like a diesel locomotive except with oil. This thing doesn't scrape oil down into the back into the oil pan. It actually pushes oil up into the busting chamber. So if this thing's ever upside down, it is you'll know it because it'll oil like a freight train. The second time type of ring is just a regular RT taper ring, reverse taper. And a reverse taper ring simply looks like Sorry, you gotta draw this in so I can look at it. Actually, just looks like that. And it does all the scraping right here on this tip. So this is facing down in the piston, just like this is facing down in the piston right there. Now, the in my opinion, the hook groove or napier always works better than what the RT taper does, so that's what you're always going to get from me. Uh, we go to our top ring, and I'll talk to you about uh, the widths and dimensions of this. You can run a 043 in a hook groove, but the common ring would be to do is a 16th. I use the 16th, I'll talk to you about that in a minute, because that applies to the top ring more than the second. But this is the style of ring that we like to use and the style of ring that I promote the most. All right, now, the top ring that we use right now is a, uh, a AP steel ring. So exact materials, I'm not 100% sure. I'm not a metal editor, just don't really care. I just know what works, what doesn't work. Uh, this works. I don't use the ductile molly. Uh, the molly faced rings, which are, are actually machined have a groove right in here and then they spray molly in it uh, in a boosted application that molly just breaks all out and it's junk and the ring is toast so we use a, a steel top ring in these applications um, they're a barrel shaped face so the actual ring top ring is actually shaped like this it has a barrel shape that's so it seals the same going up and down. All right. Now, what I want to show you, what is also important, is the dimensions of these rings. So this dimension right here, how thick this ring is, this is a 043. I normally do these in a 1 16th. Why is that? 043 ring doesn't have enough material in order to take all the heat that's generated from a boosted application. I don't use them. I always use a 1 16th ring in the top groove. The other thing that we want to do, oh and I'm sorry, that's called vertical, uh, the vertical height of the ring. So uh, you have to always look at the ring like this, straight up and down. So this vertical dimension is the vertical height of a ring. That would be 1 16th or 062. 043 is the typical hot rod or NA ring. You put those rings in a boosted motor, and I promise you, after if you're leaning on this motor, making any horsepower, that ring is gonna be all whooped up. You take the ring out of there, and it's gonna be closed like this because it's lost all its radial tension. It just can't take the heat, can't take the stress of, of everything that's going on there. That is a naturally aspirated deal to try saving some horsepower by putting in smaller rings, thinner rings that have less tension. See that tension right there? That have less tension against the cylinder bore, trying to make an extra five, 10 horsepower, whatever. So what? that's your vertical boost application. Remember, number one thing is we're not hunting for five horsepower uh, of you know, uh, ring tension that ends up costing us 20 or 30 or 50 horsepower after they wear out in about four or five hits. So what we're always looking for is uh, durability, what lasts, what helps seal up the best, and what uh, makes the most horsepower. Remember, uh, making horsepower really isn't the problem. I'll talk to you about this later and a lot of other things. Making horsepower is not the problem in boosted engines. Making stuff live is the problem. So I think the next one we'll probably be doing here uh, in a little while is we're gonna do some surface finishing when we talk about cylinder bores and uh, we'll get that done for you and that'll correlate with the, the ring package. So anyways, I'm Steve at Steve Tech. Have a great day. Dimension. The next one is called radial wall thickness. Now the radial wall thickness is this dimension right here. 
how thick this ring is right in that area. Now you'll see that in a, um, a naturally aspirated application that you'll have a back cut ring. And what back cut means is they literally cut this dimension right here to make this radial wall thickness thinner. When you make this radial wall thickness thinner, it makes this tension right there. The reason why you have to have a, you know, a clamp it down to get it in the cylinder bore, it makes that ring tension less. When that ring tension is less, it can't control oil as much. It will make a little more horsepower, very minimal, and a application. But in a boosted application, we need to have the best sealing we can and we'll sacrifice 510 horsepower in order to have better sealing because we'll make up way more than 510 horsepower with a ring that's actually controlling and doing what it needs to do under extreme cylinder te uh, temperatures and pressures. So that's what a back cut is and what the radial wall thickness is. So if you ever hear of a low tension ring set, they are gonna be thinner vertical and less, um, less radial thickness. So there's another thing that's called standard D wall D-wall is a engineering term which means there's a certain proportion of thickness, vertical thickness, to the radial wall and that is the engineering for standard D-wall which is usually like 208 thousandths or 211 thousandths in the 16th ring. So that means that this, this dimension right here is uh, 0.211 or 208 how that actual thickness right there and we what I use in all boosted engines is a standard D-wall standard tension oil ring steel top Napier second now the second ring we do the same thing standard D-wall because I want this to scrape all the oil off any oil that gets in the combustion chamber in a NA deal causes a little bit of horsepower loss any oil that gets into a boosted engine at extreme pressures usually causes detonation which causes burned up motors. So we want to have this hook groove ring be a 1 16th standard D-wall. Don't care about the uh, lower tension. We always go with the standard tension, which is usually around uh, uh, about 14 to 16 pounds, I believe. Um, same with the top ring. So that's actually how much pounds this tension right here it takes to close the gap because this is how it is in the cylinder bore. You know, you have that, that minimal clearance right there. So the way you measure that is you put it on the piston and then you would actually pull the cylinder, the piston up inside the cylinder and how many pounds of pressure it took to pull that up is how many pounds of radial tension is in the ring. So there's a bunch of engineering that goes in there. I mean, Total Seal or, uh, is primarily the people that we use for rings. And uh, they mean, obviously they have it pretty well figured out. There's some other companies that do it too. But um, that is the ins and outs of what you want to see in a ring. Now, uh, as far as ring gap, I'll cover ring gap, and then uh, that would be about the most that we'd want to know on rings. But ring gap, obviously, we would want to have the top ring be as close to butted up under operating temperature as possible. You're going to have to figure, if you were trying to do this perfect and trying to get that extra one thousandths or two thousandths of you know clearance taken up there which is absolutely minimal because remember the piston is actually covering this up so you're only seeing like that much gap in there um, typically you're going to be in a boosted application like i said i don't care about na stuff don't do it don't care about nitrous stuff don't do it in a boosted application in general you're going to see about seven thousandths of end gap how much you grind in here per inch of bore. So like on a uh, four or 500 bore, typically I set those up at 32 thousandths of end gap on the top ring. Now, the other thing that we do is, you might th be thinking about, oh, I wanna have a zero gap second ring that would end up having no, no gap there at all because I'm gonna make this thing better. Well, it doesn't. What a zero gap second ring does is, well, let, let's back up. On the second rings, I use the same gap, 
from the top ring. So if it's 32 on the top ring, it's going to be 32 on the second ring. Because I want any pressure that goes past the top ring, that anything that leaks past here, I want it easily to go past the oil ring, past the second ring, right into the oil pan. Because if I don't, what it does is it builds up a pressure in between these two rings right here. When it builds up that pressure, it actually unseats this top ring, makes it flutter, makes it go just like that, making it get accented worse. So I want any pressure that does happen to go by the top ring to go right past the second ring, right past the oil ring, right in the oil pan and out the vent. That is what needs to happen. That's why you'll see all these really big pro modified motors, any of these things that have literal uh, little chimney stacks in the back of the car or a lot of vent a lot of puke tank because there's so much air that goes past the rings it is what it is you can't keep this thing perfectly sealed up we just do the best that we can so the reason why we don't want to use a zero gap second ring is i just showed you the principle of i want all pressure that happens to go past here whatever cfm that is one two cfm whatever <clears throat> i want it to be able to go past it in the oil pan and not upset the top ring any further not make this thing sit there flutter and get upset and get even worse when you put a zero gap in there where do you think any excess pressure goes nowhere it can't go anywhere it's stuck in between the two and that zero gap second ring always makes this thing sit there flutter so i do not recommend it i don't use it i won't put them in it all I will do is this type of setup. So that pretty much covers uh, everything there. Uh, ring gap, if it's something, a smaller bore, like a 4125 bore, typically I'll gap those at like 26 to 28 thousandths, top and second ring. Um, you, like I said, this expander rail always overlaps, so there's nothing to do there. These oil rails need to have as long as they have any that's fine usually 10 15 20 it doesn't really matter what these oil rails have and your support rail if you have to have a support rail not a button if you have a support rail um, they have quite a bit of gap they'll usually be like 30 40 50 and that doesn't matter because it's just there to support these rings then you got your radio wall thickness your vertical thickness what materials um, this is usually a uh, some form of a, a ductile iron in a napier ring for the second napier hook groove ring is uh, some kind of cast iron uh, ductile iron you can't get it in a steel but it's not really important I don't think uh, but that really most important ring is your top ring that is doing all of your sealing uh, the second ring really does all of your oil control does the vast majority of oil control the oil rail and oil support here actually is kind of a secondary oil oil uh, scraper but that second ring does the majority of it that's why a lot of times you can get away with a two piston ring if you have some form of a really Billy Bad Boy oil scraper usually two piston rings don't have don't have this setup in it they have something different um, but in a boost application you're not gonna do that boost application remember Number one thing is we're not hunting for five horsepower uh, of you know a ring tension that ends up costing us 20 or 30 or 50 horsepower after they wear out in about four or five hits. So what we're always looking for is uh, durability, what lasts, what helps seal up the best, and what uh, makes the most horsepower. Remember, uh, making horsepower really isn't the problem. I'll talk to you about this later and a lot of other things. Making horsepower is not the problem in boosted engines making stuff live is the problem so i think the next one we'll probably be doing here uh in a little while is we're going to do some surface finishing when we talk about cylinder bores and uh, we'll get that done for you and that'll correlate with the the ring package so anyways i'm steve steve tech have a great day